Hey everybody, RetroPie Guy here. Today I'm going to show you how to set up and map your RetroBit Tribu64 gamepad controller with RetroPie. So this process is actually going to be exactly the same even if you're using the RetroFighters Brawler 64 gamepad controller. Pretty much any N64 gamepad controller that shares the same sort of layout here. Obviously this is a completely reimagined version of the N64 gamepad controller. Very different layout here. So any controller that shares the same layout is going to work with this process that we're going to demonstrate for you today. So I do want to mention before we get started here, this is a two part process. Don't go ahead and click the X on this video and jump out of here thinking that you're completely done after we go through the initial mapping with RetroPie, because we do have to go into our N64 game collection, jump into RetroArch and go through the mapping process within RetroArch as well as on the initial RetroPie setup. So stay tuned, we're going to jump into this. I'll give you a clear view of exactly what you need to do to get this up and running on RetroPie. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, so in order to set up our RetroBit Tribute 64 gamepad controller with RetroPie, we first need to have either a keyboard or a gamepad controller that's already been set up with our system on hand. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna jump into our main menu so you can hit start on your regular gamepad controller. Again, that has already been configured with RetroPie. And we'll jump down to the bottom option here, right above quit, which is configure input. We'll select that. You're gonna get this little notice here. It says, are you sure you wanna configure input? We're just gonna go ahead and select yes. So now you're going to plug in your RetroBit Tribute 64 gamepad controller into the USB port on your Raspberry Pi. Once you do that, you'll get this little notice here. It says one gamepad detected. Once you get that, you're just going to pick up your gamepad controller and you'll hold down any of the buttons on here. You will notice that in the bottom of this white box, the name of this controller will populate in there for a split second before it brings you right into your configuring page. So I'm just going to hold down the A button on here. You see the name did flash across that box and it again brings you right into this configuring page. So this is where we're going to map our controller. So we have to follow along with the prompts on screen. So for D-pad up, we're going to go to our center D-pad here. We're going to hit D-pad up. For D-pad down, we'll hit D-pad down. For D-pad left, we'll hit D-pad left. And for D-pad right, we'll hit D-pad right. Now for the start button, we're going to go up here, hit our start button, which is dead center on our controller. For the select button now, we're actually going to do C down. For the A button, we'll hit the A button. For the B button, we'll hit the B button. And for the X button, we're going to hit C left. For the Y button, we're gonna hit C up. And for the left shoulder, we're gonna hit our left shoulder, which is up here at the top. For right shoulder, we're gonna hit our right shoulder. And for the left trigger, we're going to hit our Z trigger. So we can choose whichever one you want to utilize. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna go with the right one here. So for left trigger, I'm actually gonna hit my right trigger. And for right trigger, we're going to hit our C right button. Now for left and right thumb, we don't need to utilize these because we don't have any thumb buttons on this particular gamepad controller. So we're just going to hold down any of the buttons that we've already configured in order to skip these two options. So I'm just going to hold down A. That skips the left thumb. Hold it down again for the right thumb. Now for left analog up, that's where we're going to utilize our analog stick here. So for left analog up, we're going to hit left analog up. Left analog down, we'll hit down. Left analog left will hit left, and left analog right will hit right. Now for the right analog, we don't need to utilize this. Again, we don't have dual analog sticks on this particular controller, so we're going to skip all these again. Holding down A is the route that I always take, so I'll hold down A, hold down A, hold down A, and hold down A. So now for the hotkey, this is going to be the button that we hit in order to exit ROMs and go back to our game collection menu. For the hotkey button, I'm going to hit my Z trigger. Now I'm going to hit the same trigger that I already mapped as my Z trigger. So we will hit the right one in this case. Again, make sure that you do it to whatever you already used as your trigger before. So that populates in there. And now to confirm all of these mapping settings, we're just going to hit our A button. It's going to hit OK. And it's going to load for a couple seconds and it should bring us right back out to our main menu. All right, it does. So we'll hit our B button. So now you can see that we're able to navigate through our different collections just by moving our analog stick. Same thing with our D-pad here. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to jump into our N64 game collections here, and we're actually gonna jump into a game and then jump into RetroArch because we actually need to map this once again in RetroArch. So we're gonna jump into N64. I'm gonna just jump into Mario Kart 64 here as my game just because I'm super familiar with that one. So we're gonna let the game load in once we see our Nintendo symbol floating around. We're going to hit our Z trigger and our C left button to open up RetroArch. So I'm going to hit Z trigger and C left. Brings me right into my quick menu here on RetroArch. So we're actually going to hit our B button to back out one page here. 
And then we're going to jump over to that second column there, which is settings. And now we're going to jump down to input. We're going to select this with the A button. And now we're going to scroll down and jump into port one binds. And now we'll scroll down once again. And you can see here we have all of our different mapping options for each of the controls for the N64 controller here. It looks very similar to that of the one that we just did through RetroPie. However, this is going to be necessary to jump in here once again, just to confirm that everything is set up properly. There will be a few options that we need to go in and edit. So what I like to do is just go through these one by one. Um, so we'll first start with the A button. So in order to do this, we're gonna select with the A button here, and then we're gonna hit A button again. Now we'll go down to the next option, which is the B button. We'll select it with the A button, and then we'll hit the B button. We're gonna go into start now, select it with the A button, hit the start button. And you can see on the right hand column there that all of these do populate in. So now we're gonna go through the D-pad options, select it with A, D-pad up, go down to the next one, select it with A, D-pad down. Next one, select it with A, D-pad left, select it with A, D-pad right. So all those are all set. So now we're gonna go down to our shoulder buttons here. We're gonna skip the C1 and C4 here. So for left shoulder, select it with A, hit our left shoulder. Right shoulder, select it with A, hit our right shoulder. And now for the Z trigger, again, pick whichever one you're going to stick to here. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna be utilizing the one on the right-hand side. So we'll select the Z trigger with A, hit it here, that saves. So now we need to go down, we'll bypass this control stick options, and we're gonna to go to our C buttons here. You'll notice that these are not yet populated in. That's because they did not pull the mapping from our original RetroPie mapping because we just set that up in order to be able to navigate through our system. They just are not going to be set up for games just yet. So we're gonna do that now. So for the top option, this is really important, so definitely want to make sure that you do this 100% correct. So the top option is going to be, you're gonna select it with A, and we're going to do C right. So C right is going to populate just like that. We'll go down to the next one, select it with A, and it's gonna be C left. Go down to the next one, third option down for the C buttons, select it with A, and we're gonna hit C down. Now the final option, the fourth one down, we are going to select it with A, and we're gonna do C up. So with this controller, the way that they populate is the numbers on the right column there for each of these C buttons is going to read 9308. You can see that again on the right column where we just put all these in. So that is all we need to do here. So we are gonna just scroll down, it'll loop us back to the top and we're gonna hit save auto config. We'll confirm that with our A button right here. You'll get a little confirmation in the bottom left corner. And now we can back out of this. So what we'll do is we'll hit our Z trigger and our C left again. It'll bring us right back into our game. So now we'll test this out. Mario Grand Prix. Select your player. Let's go. Select man.
as you can see from this gameplay demo that the controls are working perfectly for N64 games. So that's going to do it for today. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, be sure to smash the like button for us. And be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We do a whole bunch of different videos based around retro gaming. We do tutorials like this one, product reviews, gameplay demos, just a little bit of everything on here. And of course, check us out online on our website, www.retropieguy.com. Thanks for watching.